Cocaine is a hell of a drug. drug. audio and then i'll let you i'll count it in you could do the intro if you want if this is your this is your time to shine all right longo show some all right. i'm a little i'm a little gassed i just got off like a fucking three hour call but um yeah i got you all right three two one how you doing uh you want me to you want me to intro yeah dude i don't know man I, i've never done that well, here we are. Welcome to episode dose of Coquina Cowboys, because the first one, Longo here didn't like his audio quality, so he's like, let's leave it on the Patreon. So make sure to check that out on the Patreon. It'll be a Patreon exclusive on Fort Jefferson, and we go deep on that one. Also, make sure to check out Occultist Monday, my mm -hmm. journal, occult and esoteric subjects on there. Make sure to get a copy of... The comic book, The Chosen One versus The Saturnian Cube, on my website, the101podcast.com. Follow me on social media, at the101podcast. And Longo, you want to plug your stuff for the people who want to check you out, dude? Sure. Uh, old World Florida on YouTube and Old underscore World underscore Florida on Instagram. So, excited to be here. Kakina I love the Cowboys. Yeah. I love how, how energetic you are right now, dude. It's it's amazing. So <laughs> what are we going to be talking about today, dude? Because last time we covered Fort Jefferson and we're going to be we're going to be doing a couple stops in Florida before getting to the meaty stuff that I really want to get to in these episodes. Mm -hmm. But what are we going to be covering today? The Ponce de Leon Hotel in St. Augustine, Florida, built by in in quotations built by henry flagler the railroad and oil tycoon best friend and business partner of john d rockefeller um they opened standard oil together and towards the end of his life mr flagler would move down to florida he would visit and basically he is the man responsible for building the railroad all the way down the east coast of florida and saint augustine at, at this point in the 1880s was as far down as people had built so flagler began building hotels allegedly hotels i mean they look like castles once you see this thing basically uh and we'll start taking a look What happened was uh, Henry Flagler bumped into a man named Franklin Smith. And Franklin Smith uh, had built, right in quotations, built, possibly inherited, the Villa Zareda in... Oh, you can see my stuff? Or that's you flipping through? Th that, that's me flipping through it. Okay, oh, yeah. Just... Okay, all right. That's good. But uh, Franklin Smith, Henry Flagler, uh, saw Mr. Smith's castle that he had in St. Augustine when he was vacationing. And he offered to buy the castle. But uh, basically, Franklin Smith refused. And but Flagler was very, very interested. Could you look up Villa Zareda? Because that's kind of where the, the story starts. Um, Thank you. We, we've got... Zaneda? Villa no. Zorreda. Z-O-R-A-Y-D-A. Wow. Yeah, there I you go. Am, I am an idiot. Sorry about that. That's okay. So Villa Zoreda, you've got... Uh, that was built in, I think, 1885. Maybe 1883. But 
early 1880s and basically Franklin Smith developed this method of pouring concrete. But why this concrete was so special is that it had limestone, crushed up limestone shells mixed in with it. So it actually replicated limestone. And you could make the argument that limestone is nothing but cast crushed up shells. And this is a castle. You know, if you, if you can spell castle, castles are cast. They're not built, they're cast. So with Villa Zareda, ooh, who's that? <clears throat> with Villa Zareda, <laughs> with Villa Zareda, uh, Flagler was amazed. This is the story, right? You know, God forbid these Moorish buildings were actually here before any of these white guys showed up. But the Villa Zareda was built in Moorish style and it was made out of poured concrete. And this concrete technique was actually learned from the natives who would make a tabby. And the tabby is, like I said, synthetic limestone. Uh, you know, people like Paul Cook use the word geopolymer. And I think this fits that uh, parameters of something that you are casting and you, what you, the result is basically a castel, a castel. And that building was built in the 1880s and is still standing today and is stronger than any other building in St. Augustine. And the Juan Ponce de Leon Hotel, what we're going to be talking about today, basically, Flagler was so impressed with that building technique, allegedly, that he contracted Smith to help build these um, hotels, a series of hotels together. And what would eventually be downtown St. Augustine, they built it all out of Franklin Smith's unique cast casting limestone technique. It's called Kakina Mix. That's why we're the Kokina Cowboys, right? Hey. So, <laughs> so Kakina, this Kakina mix, it's a synthetic limestone and the pyramids are made of limestone. You know, it's basically all the pyramids, uh, even the shell mounds here in Florida that are pyramids are made out of a similar material, whether it's just natural clumped up shell that is hardened over time this is made on purpose. So I think that Masons are privy to secrets like this where, and we're told that once Franklin Smith helped Flagler build these hotels, and the, especially this one, the Juan on Juan Ponce de Leon Hotel, uh, that Franklin Smith allegedly died and had only taught a few people the technique and those people died and the technique was lost. So they don't build like this today. Um, that's what we're told. And I would assume that's because if everyone had houses this sturdy, uh, Florida would be losing a lot of money on, you know, renewals, remodeling and uh, real estate, you know, and hurricane storm damage, all these Houses made of wood get all beat up and have to be replaced every every couple of years, you know. This thing has lasted, you know, almost 150 years. Coming up, you know, close to 150 years, these things are. So these things are solid like a castle. And you can see that many of them have arrow slits. Uh, the Juan Ponce de, de Leon Hotel, what we're looking at, we're looking at the courtyard right now. You can see some arrow slits, not here, but on the exterior. I'm going to show some pictures. You want to pull up your, your screen there? Sure, let's see. I'm just flipping through some stuff right now. Yeah. Oops. This place was so baller back then, dude. They had like a pit a full of gators and all that stuff. I'm about to pull up your screen. Yeah. Okay. You can see that on this exterior, you can see up in the corners of the towers, like the towers where it's like an extra story in the corners. Uh, some of these 
windows are so skinny that they could be arrows. I guess I don't have a good picture of that. But top left in that picture, you see this little slit far left. Wait, which slit are you, are you talking about? You said they're called what? Arrow slits? It's a skinny window that qualifies as an air, like an archery slit where really? an, arch, an archer would be shooting out of. Oh, the one at the um, top left there, right? Top, the, the... top left, top left. It's skinnier than that other one next to it. Yeah, yeah, I see it there. And under that bell tower, you can see another one. This 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 place is really something, and I, and once you're wrapped up, I want to get into the. I'm sure you're gonna bring it up, but the guys that that were contracted to to build it because they're kind of shady too. They're part of this this. Is that rep- Hast- Hastings and Carrere? Carrere and Hastings, yeah. Yeah, Carrere and Hastings. What else did they do? It's they did a lot apparently so <laughs> yeah they did like a lot of stuff in dc they did a yeah. lot of stuff in um pretty much so, all over all these tartarian buildings they all have this greco-roman architecture yeah. but then in florida they switched to the moorish so it's strange so they ca- they called it it was one of the outstanding american bow arts architecture mm-hmm. firms and the bow art was like the academic architectural style Tara Ecole de Beaux Arts in Paris, particularly from the 1830s to the end of the 19th century. And it says it draws upon, and that's how you supposedly get all this. This is really magnificent. Dude. Wow, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah. These this has Tartaria written all over it. Romania, dude. Mm-hmm. Paris. And wasn't I wasn't the Ponte de Leon Hotel one of their first yes projects ever yes yeah, so let's look up their works here so the 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 firm's first major commission came from the parishioner of rev hastings henry morris morrison flagler the florida developer and railway tycoon mm. from whom the partners built the ponce de leon hotel in 1885 to 1888 so they said they built it in three years <laughs> not only that said- not only that, but in 1887, Flagler was also building a block away. Alcazar, the, right? The Alcazar and uh, Franklin Smith with him was also building. That's the Alcazar, the Leitner Museum now. Wow. And, and then the uh, Hotel Cordova. And it was also renamed Santa Monica or vice versa. This Ca- gives Ca- me like, like super... Casa, sorry, Casa Monica Hotel this gives me super like Vimana. What, what's the stuff at the top of the Hindu? It's oh, I don't know. Vimanas is that what you call them? Like the spaceships that they say that <laughs> the chariot right. of the gods, or it's like a spaceship, whatever. Mm-hmm. It gives me super. What it almost fuck? it almost looks like. Uh... What the fuck? <laughs> oh, so that's hey. So we'll save that for the Alcazar. The Alcazar is going to be a great. Wait, episode. is that yeah. is that part of it? Yeah, dude. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, wow, all right. <laughs> the shrunken head and shit. There we go. So as well as the <laughs> you're, Memorial you're Presbyterian Church. Wow. So they were, okay, these guys were supermen. They were all building. All in that year. <laughs> Everything was completed around 1887. All the projects going on at the same time in this revolutionary style of poured concrete. And it tells you that the Juan Ponce de Leon Hotel was actually one of the uh, first poured concrete buildings ever in the planet. Now, I don't believe that at all because obviously, you know, the mainstream timeline is pretty uh, questionable. Especially, so, with, yeah. So they were building the Alcazar, the flag, the Memorial Presbyterian Church, mm-hmm. and the house for Henry Flagler nearby, which that's not White House, not the one that we went to, right? No. It's another one. And by the way, oh. for those that, that haven't checked out the the K-Pok tree video that we did, check that out on either one of our channels that we did that on there. Mm-hmm. But they did design, design the second house for Flag right here, Whitehall, and the resort he developed, Palm Beach, Florida. Whitehall was completed in 1902. Whitehall is a Mediterranean-flavored house faced with white stucco with palatial interiors and various styles range around a ground entrance hall with a double staircase wow okay mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So all in that little, it seems 1887 is kind of the intersection point where all these projects are going on at the same time. And Flagler, he's also, you know, at the same exact time, building and building and building more railroad too. So this man has his hands so full, you know, it's crazy that they were getting all this done in swampland with no like major highways or anything, just in swampland. It was now, ironically, St. Augustine did, it was completely like developed and had electric trolleys and trams. It's pretty remarkable. It's kind of like Australia. You know, I was talking to Campbell about, about the Ponce de Leon hotel, uh, mostly just St. Augustine, but it's uh, Florida was like the final frontier of America. You say that a lot, right? Yeah. And I got that from an essay that, that I had sent mm -hmm. to you and I, I reached out to that guy to come on the show or, or do an interview. He never got back to me because he talks about the Gilded Age conspiracy. He gets deep into that and he literally breaks down the it's a 400 page paper where he breaks down the entire history of Florida and that w it was the last frontier. So they there were in Congress, there were Republicans who were like, hey, we don't need to be spending money in Florida because it's God's country. That's how bad it is that God can't give it to anybody else. That's why it's God's country. And they talked about how it was that they have expeditions that they were doing in Florida where at night they would shine a torch and all you, you would see the floors moving because of all the, the reptiles and the snakes and everything in the swampland. They would go like this and they would just see the, the floor and the the swampland moving around because it was alive. And they, imagine the mosquitoes back then, bro. How yeah. that must have been. Oh, bro. It probably, it probably looked. Have you seen Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? No. Okay, never mind. When the uh, rep reptiles are all having sex with in in the blood, that's what it kind of reminds me of. Why would why would that? that sex. <laughs> if you've seen it, if you've seen it, you'll know what I mean. There's oh, a uh... Marco Longo's a weirdo, man. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a 4K walkthrough. I'm gonna play this while you talk. Yeah. Let's see. Here. Will that take us room to room? I believe so. I had I actually didn't watch it beforehand, but here I'll bring it up now. Shout out to this person, Wandering Jack. Posted this in May. So this is Flagler. And we've been talking about going out to these places eventually and mm -hmm. doing it in person. How we did at Whitehall, right? We did that video. People seem to really like that and enjoyed that video. Yeah. Yeah, we so, gotta do that here. We will. I've got one walking around. I do a tour of St. Augustine, but I don't, <clears throat> I don't say anything in the video. So well, nobody wants to hear you talk anyways, Mongo. So it's, it's all good, bro. Right. <laughs> They'd rather just look at me. <laughs> so check this out, dude. They got like some, you, you know, my whole thing with the Tartarian aspect of everything. And I think I've mentioned it before is where were the indigenous people writing about these things were they writing about it i mean i could be wrong mm -hmm. but were they i i think that they would remember some building like this being around well i don't think that the i don't think that the uh indigenous people is necessarily one group of people and i think that in pre-columbian america you i think you had various stages of development where some tribes might have been the loincloth wearing um, type, uh, when some may have been highly, highly refined society on par, if not greater than that of your, you know, European classical society. And I think the, the Moors themselves could be a very good candidate for that group of people. They would bridge the gap between that ancient, ancient, and then they are kind of the period, the pre-Columbian. And if I had to guess if this building is quote unquote ancient or maybe even just 500 years old versus 150, that it would probably be Moorish escapees or Moorish natives of America who would probably be wearing stuff like turbans and 
worshiping Venus, doing stuff like that. And that's kind of what you'd expect to see inside of Moorish architecture. And I think what you see here is a uh, hurricane proof Moorish architecture. You know, they kind of have some liberty in the Middle East to build more extravagantly because they don't have hurricanes like we do. They might have sandstorms, but the hurricanes, I think what you're seeing here is hurricane proof Moorish architecture, not Moorish revival. And can you get into the because there is red brick at uh, at this no it's actually there might be some red brick but Is it right here like very here? little May, maybe in the archways yeah but all the red trim that you see at the top and, and is the, this ponce de leon no this is the alcazar we should <laughs> oh no is it wait no it's not rewind black bear hotel no it's oh, the this is the Lighter Lightning. Museum. Wow. Yes, okay. they are. He might just be so. looking at it. They are right across the street from each other. Oh, they, okay. That makes sense. They look not even across the street. They're, it's, they're separated by like a, a city city park, city square. So who's this guy? I don't know. I don't Interesting. know. So, I, so what I think is going on with these with these statues, right? Might, might be DeSoto. I've, I've always said that back then in egypt they were animating statues and there's stories in the picatrix that for example hermes trismegistus had a city that the name i'm gonna find the name here because it kind of sounds like alcazar but i have it pulled up here but anyways there's this story where you have hermes trismegistus animating statues to keep an eye on the people of the city and what i think is you know they always say be weary of idols that need to be carried well i think that somehow these i think that they were alchemists you know what i mean i think that these guys were trying to live forever and they do they achieve this by doing this type of shit, where they build some statue and people remember them for each, as long as people remember their name so you have flagler county flagler college flagler hotel flagler whatever Flagler Avenue, all these things, as long as you remember their name for X amount of time. And if you go to any sorority, like they have the Carnegie Hall or the whatever hall or the XYZ Hall, whatever name, like these people, as long as you remember their name, they keep on living forever. And I think that there is also an aspect. That's why I asked you about the red brick, because the red brick can be charged. And at, at some of these, we can get into it later. There's also hauntings involved where there is a lot of poltergeist activity. Yeah. And the limestone, too. That's what, well, that's why limestone is so, so important is at its core limestone. When you break it down, I think it's calcite and something else. Um, basically, it's miniature crystals it's very crystalline so limestone itself has the potential to store energy and information i don't know how much how well in relation to brick but the pyramids are limestone and this is like cast synthetic limestone a geopolymer quote unquote and all the red trim a lot of it is terracotta uh so it's terracotta um interesting that stuff has been around for 150 years too about 140 coming up here we go so i'm skipping through yeah i didn't again i haven't been here so but i'm gonna skip through no this is that's still out yeah right here he's going up to the there we go the yeah. college here we go now uh, much better because i don't want to get through the whole museum thing there because i know we're going to talk about that but uh, yeah. it's funny you mentioned terracotta because they allegedly say that Again, back to alchemy, the terracotta soldiers, the, the compound there, there is allegedly a pool of mercury somewhere under there where mm. I believe that since every single terracotta soldier was unique, I think that they were trying to do something about, again, infusing their souls into these soldiers. And that was his microcosm of his cosmic macrocosm palace. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes back to alchemy where these guys were literally drinking tinctures and stuff of mercury to try and live forever looking for that elixir mm -hmm. of life and it goes back to what these guys are doing look at look at this like you can't tell me if you look at these carvings you can't tell me this is not a cult bro 
right mm-hmm. you there and then when you get to the rotunda all that stuff the i, I think this one has an oculus and i'm not 100 percent. but here we have the lines again mm-hmm. right again always with the lions and you have the statue where to can i touch on the the whole the concept of living forever um yeah you can keep playing it i think um just stop if you stop a, if, a sh- shot of the windows here that you were talking about yeah they're skinny and maybe stop it if he if they get in and look at the uh the gate that comes down the like the iron gate that's on like a draw chain uh just stop it if it looks at that please but you know flagler you know my theory about uh, tree incarnation where the tree assists in the reincarnation process by bearing you mean this gate yeah, if they turn around and look at it from the back. It's okay. It's okay, I'll grab it. Yeah, just pause it for a sec. Well, Flagler, what else did he do? He had the tree. My uh, Mac's going to die here in a sec. I got to go grab the charger. But he also had the tree, the Kapok tree. So... It seems like he wanted an ancestral tree for himself too, maybe in the pursuit of trying to live forever. Because that's my philosophy is that when these old ancient ancestral trees were up, they assisted in the reincarnation process because the people would bury their ash under the tree, blah, blah, blah. I talk about it in other videos, but you have Flagler with the giant trees, Edison with the giant trees, and he was living side by side with Ford, who visited the Khorashan compound, right? So yeah, they're all occultists, and and I think the tree angle is another way they're trying to cover every every angle, of, you know, just trying to live forever, prolong life, whatever it is. Let me go grab my charger real quick. Yeah, I'll keep talking. Yeah, so I, I believe 100% with what Narco Longo was saying, where they are trying to it goes back to what the elites are trying to do nowadays they're trying to find the elixirs of life of uh, you know trying to live forever you have jeff bezos who is researching into and investing into companies that are looking for they literally dub it the elixir of life there are people who freeze their heads and their their brains and all this stuff hoping to come back again at some other time i think that's what the ancient egyptians were also trying to achieve by preserving their bodies maybe perhaps to come back to them later Mm -hmm. in some way shape or form so yeah 100 percent that they are and if you think about it right flagler was the right hand man of john d rockefeller (laughs) like john d you don't think that's he Mm -hmm. knew about the john d you know the, the famous occultist john d who was speaking yeah. to angels and all that stuff you don't think that they knew about this sort of stuff his you wife know? definitely did his wife yeah we can get into that his wife definitely did but i'd like that i'd love to touch on this fountain um so what you see there is just a fountain right interesting design frogs turtles well this fountain here is actually a functioning sundial and the frogs mark the hours of the day and the turtles, if I'm not mistaken, mark like the seasons, you know, over time, you can see how it's cast uh, throughout the year. I think the turtles represent the seasons because there's four of them. Uh, they might be the four quarters of the day, possibly. But what you have is those 12 frogs are for sure the 12 hours of the day. And that is a functioning sundial. So just like you have a sundial over in Coral Castle, you have a sundial on the uh, Bach Tower, the sundial. And as you're going to see, we're also going to find some astrology in, inside this place on the interior. And do you happen to know right off the top of your head what the frog and turtle symbolism might be pointing to? Well, do you have any assumptions? If those are toads, then it could be a reference to <laughs> this, uh, psychedelic toad venom. 
But if they're frogs, I mean, man, wh what angle do you want to look at it from? Does he, what are you thinking about when you think of frogs? When I think of frogs, honestly, dude, I think of you. We could take it a step further. You could think of the frog as some sort of metamorphosis, right? Where the frog starts as the egg, and all these occultists were all about the egg. The monus hier back to John D. The monus hieroglyphica is encased in an egg, so I, it signifies this being that goes through a transition where it goes from egg to like a fish type of thing. Mm -hmm to this other creature to then this amphibian where it can live mm -hmm. in water and we have the o oanis and all these other oanis is a, is a water god wasn't he the a dagon at least is a water these fish-headed mm -hmm. men i think yeah. that's that's where i'm looking at it from and then you have the turtles which could also symbolize the whole turtle uh you know it's turtles all the way down type of thing but yeah and the world just, yeah the world world was built on a turtle's back right it isn't that I mean, I'll look it up, but it, back to what I mentioned earlier, where it's like the Vimanas, the the the, the Vimanas at the top of these buildings. Yeah. Isn't that like a Hindu type of belief that it's built on I, top of a turtle? I think they do tortoise in Hindu, maybe. But it's a turtle in Viking, I'm pretty sure. In Viking uh, cosmology, I'm pretty sure. Interesting. And I think Japanese, too. I could be pulling that out of my ass. But... I'll look it up here, though, while you talk yeah so i mean this is a fountain and this is clearly emblematic of the fountain of youth and let's count let's do that right now i have i haven't done that yet how many stripes are on this thing seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen huh do you count 16 as well that would that's pretty significant because Coral Castle is all about 16. The 16, 16 yep. the sweet 16. Uh, this seems almost like a column. It's very phallic, but it also could, to me, could seem like a spinal column. You know, the yeah, ascension, Kundalini, the, the tree the, of life, the chrism oils spouting out at the top. Um, the line you know, at the top. It's a very odd fountain design, you know, to be honest. But basically, what else you have is, you know, Turks, people in the Tartarian community always try and bring it back to like the function of these buildings and were these machines, right? Well, a fountain, all advanced technology aside, a fountain is proven to increase the mood around the fountain. You know, if you're near a fountain, the mood is enhanced. They've done, they've measured this in different ways. You know, it, it, it's the, the, cause you know, that, uh, dripping water, running water, uh, you know, little, uh, I play for my baby, dude. He yeah, falls like, asleep to it. What do they call it? ASMR, right? Yeah. So people are obsessed with this and we're going to look at some of these pictures where you see how many people would have to be out in front of this fountain back in like the 1900s, just sitting there, just like absorbing sitting and um here let me see if i can pull one of those up i want to touch the frog symbolism because it's very yeah really interesting so Go the frog it. is a symbol in northwest coast native art and culture we can find them in totem poles house posts as well as many household items and uh, the frog is a supernatural being which inhabits the human as well as the spirit world so again oh. this metamorphosis of a transitioning through realms because that's what it is you're going from this aquatic realm this egg to the this other pleroma or something so that's really interesting supernatural being which inhabits the human as well as the spirit world and it makes me think of spirited away which i believe there are some frogs in that and the spirited away if you've ever seen that anime it's about this town that comes to life at, at night and these spirits and all this stuff come out and he adopts adapts easily to his environment and communicates between the two realms in the natural world the frog can easily switch between water and land and is associated with the springtime renewal and changing of seasons when spring comes and frogs start to croak loudly it, it is a signal for tribes of the northwest coast to end their winter ceremonies and prepare for the next hunting and fishing season wow okay uh, the frog is also a healer 
Uh, he is recognized for his ability to heal, and many believe that his songs are magical and contain divine power. Frogs are seen as, a, as cleansers of bad spirits, and shamans use frogs as spirit healers. Wow, okay, so we have here, if the if frog's tongue touches another creature, this represents the sharing of knowledge and power. So it's got to do with exoteric and esoteric knowledge. On totem poles, it occupies the bottom with its legs stretched out as a symbol of stability. And the the frogs also represent wealth, abundance, ancient wisdom, rebirth, and good luck. As the as such, the frog symbolism plays an important part in Northwest Coast cultures. Okay, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's a good good info. Can I show my screen for a little? I, I grabbed some pictures of the courtyard. You're sharing it now? Okay, you can see me? Yeah. Cool. Um, you know, that's the fountain back in the late 1890s or early 1900s. I think it says 1903 down there, maybe. But, you know, this is what this is what you did all day. <laughs> there was no uh, TV or anything. So you just kind of sat in the 95 degree weather and uh, sweat out your demons. <laughs> you would just sit sit there with your umbrella and uh this is all they did and i'd probably want to be there all day too if if you were spending as much as as this costs um do you have any info on the price i, did, I don't have any uh screen grabs of that but, no, I, but I can pull it up i don't know i know it was crazy though the amount that you paid it was like <laughs> yeah. exclusive for elites of the only his rich friends obviously could stay there so yeah. I'll pull that up here in a little bit. But that is really interesting. I would not be able to sit out there all day. Mm -hmm. And what are your what are your thoughts on the dome shape? Because as of recently, I heard that the dome is one of the stru strongest structures. It's in, structural, you know. I think it goes beyond that. I think this is clearly Antiquitech. Do you, can you see what we're looking at right now? Oh, yeah. the Is there a rooster at the top of that? <laughs> No, there's not a rooster. It's this strange electronic apparatus is what it looks like. It, that's really what it looks like. It's not a weather vane. Um, and this thing to the left, it looks like technology, like you said, <clears throat> ancient machines or ancient machinery. Uh, it's really just breathtaking to see people sitting under that dressed like that. And then you have architecture like this in florida 100 140 ish years ago and i see antiquitech when i see this uh, something that was either harvesting energy or producing energy right but basically another thing that we should touch on is these towers can you get a do you have a good shot of both the towers Juan? here i'll stop sharing I'm trying to, wow. So I'm trying to pull up what the equivalent was of the cost of it. So the cost in 1888, the hotel cost two and a half million dollars. And at its time, it was reputed to be one of the finest hotels in the world. And two and a half million dollars uh, from 1888 to today is about seventy eight million dollars today. That's pretty. It's pretty. I mean, if you look at how much they spend on stuff today i mean there's a trillion dollar city that they're building in in what is it not abu dhabi is it abu dhabi maybe somewhere over there some crazy you know uh, oil prince city they're building a, this mirror city for that's worth a trillion dollars uh what did you want me to pull up just uh, do you have a good shot of just like the front where there's you can see both towers yeah, let me pull it up here. Are you talking about this front? No, just like the front. Yeah, those that tower, but from the front view. Yeah, I'll pull it up here. Hold on. So basically, there's two towers. And what you have is in one of those towers is hot water. In the other tower is the cold water. Does that make sense? So they're like water silos, those two towers. And one has hot, one has cold. Yeah. 
And amazingly, and just look, what is that apparatus at the top? It doesn't make sense, you know? It's not, it's not emblematic of anything. It's not religious. It's not, you know, iconography. It's just, uh, looks like technology. Looks and like... We, uh, we have to mention, too, that a uh, very important thing that the power being supplied by DC generators installed by Fiverr's right. friend, yep. Thomas Edison, the Thomas Edison, who... I don't know how you feel about Tesla. What are your what are your idea what are your thoughts on Tesla? I mean, I think he was a real guy. I've read enough of his of his writing to get a sense of his personality. I think he was a real person. I think he was uh you know, a good guy that was in bed with some bad people because of his amazing ability, just the same way that Jimi Hendrix ended up in bad in bed with some bad people because of his abilities. So it always kind of tends to work out that way. I don't think these people are evil agents of disinformation or I think he is what he is, you know, famed to be, even though he's kind of not mainstream at all. Mm -hmm. He's, he's penetrated the mainstream now, you know, thank God. But I think he was a authentic guy. And I think, he was in he was in bed with you know Edison Westinghouse, the whole city of Chicago, the whole city of you know New York and yeah 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 definitely no I I I feel that Edison and Westinghouse and all these guys benefited from his knowledge and a lot of the things that uh, Tesla actually developed are credited to Edison and other guys who are still mm -hmm. around today. I mean Westinghouse is still around today. Edison is still around today, and I think he could have really built something of himself, but instead he died penniless and in love with a pigeon, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Edison went vegetarian because Tesla was vegetarian, and he he was always trying to, to one-up Tesla or trying to figure out what was giving Tesla his secrets. So he went vegetarian in order to try and be on par with Nikola Tesla. Thomas Edison did. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I did not know that part. I've seen a few. I've read. I have a few books on him, and I've seen a few docu series, but I did not know that. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> can you look up the silo? I think I have a picture of it, but it's it's in a folder. Um, can you look up the? I don't know what it's called. Let me look through my my folder. Which part? I'm still trying to find out how much it cost to stay because I know it was a lot when it first. Basically, there's this silo outside that is the steam Are you talking exhaust. About the, the separate tower on the outside? Yeah, it's like a, just a brick tower, it looks like. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, I thought they had knocked it down, but they didn't, right? No, it's still there. I saw it a couple months ago. And that thing is basically the the uh, system that Edison, quote unquote, built, right? Quote unquote, in the late 1800s was steam powered, steam energy, steam electricity. And what you had was, I think those two towers were used as pressure valves, almost a pressure system to keep this, this system running. And I don't think they know how to run it today or anything, but the lightning rods at the top would have been a part of this. And this silo. Is this, is this it right here? No, it's to the right in the center of the picture, in the dead center of the picture. You this see one? It? Yep. You can see it poking up. Oh, okay. No, yeah, I thought it was a whole separate building like this. So it's this thing right here, you mean? Yeah, let me see. Let me try and get a better picture of it. Now, now that I know what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a skinny brick. Sorry, I thought I had a picture of it. 
Have you stayed at this place? Oh, you can't stay at it. It's a, it's a, it's a college now. People live here. Okay, I found it. You got it? I found a picture of this thing, but I don't know what it is. Let's see here. I don't think it's this thing, right? It's a smokestack. That's what it's called, a smokestack. Is it this thing here? The Ponce yeah. de Leon showing the hair? Search stuff? Ponce de Leon smokestack. Not that one. Just Google search Ponce de Leon smokestack, please. And that'll bring it up. Yeah, I got it here. So this is the smokestack that was allegedly let it, you know, letting off the... Uh, oh, see, I told you, bro. It's like a whole separate thing. That... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. It is It is like somewhat attached. It Where is off to the, to the side, but it is kind of separate. Yeah, bro. This thing is wild looking. This thing right here. Yeah, and it's ribbed like a fucking weird ass sex toy or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it's bumpy, if you know what I mean. And... uh. Yeah, it doesn't even let me zoom into that. So it's a Edison boiler building. So th according to the mainstream, one of the one of the only examples of industrial architecture from the Gilded Age, the simple rectangular building is the most readily identified by its branded brick smokestack. How else to see with that? Steam dynamos mm -hmm. that powered the five buildings of the hotel Ponce de Leon. This structure was critical to the operation of the mag magnificent hotel. What? Yep. Fuck. And today, I think they use it as like part. It's part of the art building now. So I don't know if they still burn stuff out of it, like a kiln or something. But yeah, there you go. That thing was built at the same time, and like. Like they just said, that was very integral to this steam energy system. That was very, you know, hush hush. We don't really know what was going on. For as integral as it was, there's no good pictures of it because when you look it up, I mean, you're seeing here what. I think if you search uh, art building, Homestead on Hotel art building. <laughs> whatever Anyways, that's a good picture that's, that's what it looks one. like that's it so let's let's move on what's what else is there can we keep going through the uh 4k walkthrough yes. so okay. we have this phallic like sundial with some symbolism at the bottom that we broke down which is really interesting mm -hmm. i have the turtle symbolism which is uh, longevity, perse uh, perseverance, steadfastness, protection, retreat, healing. Around the world, the tortoise and the turtle can be seen as a symbol of wisdom and knowledge. And it is able to defend itself on its own. So it can be regarded as personifying water, the moon, the earth, time, immortality, ding, 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 and fertility. So again, this creature who can retract into itself and essentially go into another dimension kind of the, un the underworld kind of yeah, yeah exactly the underworld which right. these guys were and florida's native has native tortoises too people always forget that it's a shit ton of tortoises in florida you've got so many types of sea turtle or not sea turtle turtle sea turtle green turtle leatherback snapper alligator snapper soft shell dude i went to turtle. the i went to the zoo the other day i'm gonna try and find a picture of the snapping turtle oh my goodness and check this archway out bro this gateway here look at yeah. that that is really cool yeah we should definitely come here and do one of the tours and then definitely. talk and do a video I'll have all my stuff ready but i saw this huge snapping turtle at the zoo the other day that i went Oh my goodness, I'm going to pull up a picture of it because it was, it was wild. 
See this interior, I had a, a carpenter reach out to me uh, who says he's been doing carpentry for, you know, 20 odd years or whatever. And he says, this alone could not have been done in three years. This uh, courtyard, foyer, whatever you want to call it, uh, lobby, a four, foyer, foyer. Basically, that wood back there, those wood pillars, just sourcing the lumber, getting it all in there built, you know, they're casting concrete around it. You don't even know what it's going to weigh. It's the first building that's ever been done like that. It's pretty crazy. And that that amazing fine woodwork is still there today. Is that all the tour? That is all the tour, bro. Okay, well, here. Let me take over. I've got some pictures of the interior. I'm going to show the snapping turtle real quick, bro. This thing was bananas. So it doesn't look as big here on this picture, but Capone is at the Brevard Zoo. And, dude, it was gigantic so imagine being one of these last you know florida in the 1800s was the last frontier you're walking through the swamps and this dinosaur bites your big toe off or something mm -hmm. or your Dude, foot off your whole your foot fo bro i'm telling you the size of this turtle was crazy i was there was so many people around it and i couldn't mm -hmm. take a picture of it but He's at least 55 years old or potentially over 60. Oh, here he is, dude. This guy is a beast, bro. Capone. Check him out, dude. <laughs> oh, look at his. Imagine, dude, you're walking. You're wading through the swamps of Florida. Have you seen the guy on Instagram that does? He dives in the Everglades. Have you seen that guy? Yeah insane so check this guy out look how big he is yeah bro that's an alligator snapping turtle yes look at him that's a dinosaur bro look at that insane when i saw this thing i was like wow that is crazy huge Jesus. it looks way way bigger in person when you go to see go check him out Rivard county zoo mm -hmm. Uh, what, what did you want to pull up, bro? Uh, I've just got some pictures of the interior. Have you seen the rotunda at the, I believe it's the Capitol building? <laughs> Where George Washington is on a rainbow. Have you seen that one? No. You haven't seen it? I'll pull it up here later. Are these construction videos? Is it construction pictures that you just had there there's one construction picture i do have one construction picture we'll talk about that one but just look at this shit now if you're a carpenter let me know if you think this could be done in three years right with in the midst of a grand architectural project where they're pouring concrete they're building railroad they're you know by rookies right <laughs> and probably slave labor because uh Flagler got busted using slave labor in, I think, the Keys building yes. his o overseas highway and probably was doing the same thing before that, too. <laughs> but uh, this is like master carpentry woodwork. And what well, you've got here when I think we're in the uh, ballroom now, what you have is uh it's hard to tell there i'll go grab a um i'll go grab another picture but you have the 12 signs of the zodiac yep. on, on this roof and the 12 signs of the zodiac right there you can see i think it said sagittarius or someone riding a lion might be leo <laughs> um but there's better pictures i'll go grab one if you want to and it's Tiffany glass, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, kind of like a intermediate between regular glass and stained glass a little bit. It has some of the same motifs where you see the, uh, you know, the uh, 
I don't know. How to, I don't know anything about glass, but uh. Well, the the process that it goes through. So, if you've ever read Fulcanelli and the Mystery of the Cathedrals, uh, what mm-hmm. you know, you mentioned earlier that these buildings are machines, and I know I talked about in the first episode where it, adhering to certain Pythagorean principles, the the Greeks saw buildings as algorithms incarnated. So this goes back to this idea that they're you they're implementing math in these occulted lines, this occult scaffolding. And I did a I did a an interview, uh, an architecture, an architect. He wrote the book The Architect as Magician. And he writes about how the art of designing, the art of making a building is magical. It's a magical process. The the stylist that the architect uses is the wand. And one of the very first uh, architects, uh, I believe, not Imhotep, I think that was his name. Anyways, one of these Egyptians, he was a magician and an architect. So the idea that uh, these these powers can be, you know, a building can be used as a talisman, essentially. Mm-hmm. And I think that the, because I always come at everything from like an occult standpoint, because I do believe everything is related to the occult. And looking, for example, looking at this rotunda, if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen the, check this out, look how beautiful that is. Mm-hmm. If you've ever, is this like a high quality, it's a really high quality picture. If you've ever seen the tomb of Christian Rosencrantz, which was a, a Rosicrucian, like they're like their Messiah esque guy, right? It, the I, I believe that the Oculus serves as some sort of purpose because it goes back to that bending of light. And I know you and I mm-hmm. talked about that with the I forgot what you call the astral architecture or something like that, where I think it's the way that light is bent within these buildings that invokes a certain type of feeling in people and by them using this certain glass you have it at Jekyll Island there's there's like this little church there with this crazy glass work it's all about the way it refracts the light and makes it look and you have here this oculus the way it interacts with the building and just really bends the light within it and I'm going to pull up a picture of the the tomb of Christian Rosencrantz. Have you ever heard of a dream machine? Yes, with the little slits and the, the, the yeah. flickering lights. It's kind of like the same effect, right? If the sun's hitting it and getting refracted. Yeah, there's... to to what to make you, uh, you know, unlock another state of consciousness, essentially. So if you look at again the tomb of Christian Rosencrantz this oculus always plays a role in the and for those right a a church a lot of these ancient churches the miracles were attributed to the building you know a biological change occurred in people in these buildings so the these miracles that were happening there they were like hey this isn't god it's like the building is a part of the alchemical process and it literally evokes biological changes within people. That's what Kundalini is and all this stuff where you're literally by meditation, by being in a certain place at a certain time, you're able to invoke a, a change within yourself, like physically, like actually. Yeah. The Kundalini, it's like the, the fountain in the center yes. of in the center of the, uh, Center of uh, the Ponce de Leon courtyard. Let me go. Let me. Uh, I'm going to pull up. Here, while you do that, I'm going to show a picture of okay. or a video of an old an old time at the hotel from 1926. Is a black and white video. Pretty cool. We have the fountain in here and everything. They have the fountain. And I guess he had a pit full of gators, dude. It was gnarly. He had a pit full of gators? Yeah, I bro. Heard, I haven't heard that yet. 
So we have the courtyard or whatever this is here, the front. And this is 1926. So imagine this fairly recently, quote unquote, built in all how magnificent it must have been. <laughs> the plants are the same, though, right? They always got those palm trees here in Florida, the same vegetation, unfortunately. But I had somebody ask me the other day, does do the leaves change in Florida? I'm like, kind of, kind of, sort of. Not, not how you get in certain other places, but yeah. Dude, it's so hard to find this. Uh, you know, the glass? Up, no, just an up close picture of uh, the zodiac signs on the ceiling. Mm. Here we go, bro. Look at the gator pit that's about to come up now. It's crazy. And I'm sure there wasn't a shortage of those while they were moving <laughs> along through the swamp. Look at that. Yeah, they were riding them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right outside of this place is where that picture is of the guy uh in the cart that oh yeah, yeah. That, i've seen i used it as a cover photo for one of my mm -hmm. episodes uh, actually yeah that's the saint augustine uh city gates that had the guy in the alligator cart <clears throat> this is gnarly but I also want to point out that at the entrance of the Littner Museum, the statue is of Pedro Menendez de Avalos, which is the Spaniard who founded St. Augustine. Really? Yes. So wait, did this gator just go down a, a slide? Or is that a person? Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> that would have been dope. But yeah, it's in 1926, Ponce de Leon and Gators. So yeah, it's a, a, a it was a classic example of the conquistador, intrepid, and energetic, loyal, and brutal. So this guy here was, that's the statue that we saw. So Don Pedro Menendez, of course. Still haven't found the picture. No, I got it. I was on um, I was on Google uh, I was on Google Chrome, and the website wasn't working on Google Chrome. So I went on Safari, and I have the picture right now. I'm gonna pull it up. I've also got the um, the tile, like the mosaic tile that they have on the floor. I've got an interesting little story about that. The one with his face on it. <laughs> yes no not not with his face on it um where he told the architect uh you're not going to be able to see what i mean until i until i show you um he told the architect basically the the building is too perfect i don't i don't i don't want i don't want god to be angry at me so go fuck up the tile in the in the uh, ceiling not the ceiling the uh, mosaic on the floor this tile uh, arrangement they it's weird they moved one tile off to to the wrong position so the wrong color was in the pattern mm -hmm. if that may if that makes sense to make yeah. it imperfect so that god would have mercy on flagler that's the story right Yo, quote unquote check this out dude flagler returned to seeing Austin in 1885 so back to what we were talking about at the beginning and made smith an offer if smith could raise fifty thousand dollars flagler would invest one hundred and fifty thousand, and they would build the whole a hotel together smith couldn't come up with the funds so mm -hmm. flagler began construction of the 540 room ponce de Leon hotel by himself spending several times his original estimate he spent two and a half million dollars on it after the fact and he was going to invest yeah. 150 at the beginning okay smith helped train the masons on the mixing and pouring techniques he used on the zoradia Zor Zor zoridia how do you say it again zoreda zoreda i'm an idiot two years Thanks, later bro. smith would build the casa monica hotel opposite the ponce de leon mm -hmm. 
on the land he sold. That that yeah. thing's that one's even more of a castle. Whoa. Yeah, this yeah. thing is sick looking. Dude. Well, hang on. Let's those each can be their own episode, you know. Wow, okay. Here I've yeah. got I've got the um tile and the zodiac picture if I Do could. it. You chiefin? No, dude, I don't do that. What's that? What's that one meme? It's like you smoke weed. No, we don't bother me. <laughs> Have you seen that meme? No. So here, the rotunda. You can see what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The rotunda floor is done in hand placed mosaic. It was one of the last things that was being finished up before the hotel opening, and Mr. Flagler and an assistant were admiring what had been done. When the assistant made the comment, it was perfect, that it was perfect. Mr. Flagler took offense to that, saying, only God is perfect. He then advised the tile layers to make a mistake so it would not be perfect. Can you find it? Each of the black triangles have a white corner other than one. Quite a mistake. It really doesn't make sense. You know, it it, it makes no sense at all, this story. Interesting. I thought you were going to pull up the one where it's his face on it. Have you seen that one? No. You haven't heard the story of how he's forever embedded into the floor on a tile? No. I'll pull it up here, but yeah. Wow. That's... And here's the, uh, you can still see my screen. Can you still see my screen? Yeah, dude. Okay. Signs of the Zodiac are part of the dining room ceiling decor. To stay in the hotel and many of the years after it opened, you had to commit to paying for the season. This could be from November to May. It didn't matter if you only stayed one day, you still paid the 4000 each to stay. For a couple, that would equate to a quarter of a million dollars today. Wow. Yikes. So that's the sign of Sagittarius. And he's actually got some astro theology in here because the Sagittarius is killing the Zodiac. Sorry, killing the Scorpio, it looks like. Hmm. Um, but another thing I wanted to get into is this guy. I covered this a little with Campbell, uh, when I did the show on, with autodidactic about St. Augustine, <clears throat> but I'll read from here again. And I think this website's called the gypsy and the traveler gypsy and something. I don't give a fuck. This is, <laughs> this is not a downspout. Mr. Flagler's friend was Thomas Edison. The Edison Electric Company powered the building with steam heat and 4,000 electric lights, making the hotel one of the nation's first electrified buildings. That's a weird word, electrified, right? Electrified buildings. This dragon had a red light bulb in it, making it appear as if it were breathing fire. There were several around the courtyard. Must have been an exciting sight for the guests. But Mr. Flagler had to hire additional staff to, to turn on and off the light switches in the rooms. So now he's talking about uh, the hotel rooms where they had just regular lights. Mr. Flagler had to hire additional staff to turn on and off the light switches in the rooms because the guests were afraid of electricity and thought they might be shocked. <laughs> and that very well may have been the case because, um, like we were talking about Tesla, the whole debate was between DC AC, mm -hmm. which one is which one is safe, which one will kill you. So here's another very peculiar thing. Uh, this clock piece, I don't know what you'd call it. Clock set is, I'll just read it. Thomas Edison designed this electric clock set in one of the largest blocks of white onyx known. So in the world, it's definitely the largest in this hemisphere, but largest cut of white onyx. So how did I get to Florida, right? I think they have some white onyx in uh, in Georgia, maybe. I could be wrong. 
but there's definitely marble in Georgia. Yes. Um, notice that Edison used four numeral ones rather than the usual IV for the no number four. That is mm. bizarre. That has Masonic occult code written all over it, right? Really? Yes. Look at that. No, notice that Edison used four numeral ones rather than, sorry, yeah, four numeral ones rather than the usual IV. Do you know Roman numerals? Yes. So, you know, four, four for people that don't know, four is IV, because once you hit four, you're subtracting from five, which mm -hmm. is V. So the one, the I, is subtracting from the five. Uh, it's kind of uncommon. I don't know much about Roman numeral history and how much uh, people were using them back in that Victorian era in America, but it's it's uncommon to have the four single eyes. It's, I think it's code. I think it's some type of... Um, it's indicative of something. I feel. And where, where is this in the hotel? Do you know? I don't know. I think it's like the ladies. I think it was actually like the ladies cigar room or some shit like that. <laughs> it wasn't even the main hall, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so here's the last thing that I really wanted to not last. Um, oh, those pictures are nice. We've got this. Uh, <clears throat> this is the only construction photo, quote unquote, construction photo. And you tell me. What I see is a completed hotel with a little weak ass scaffolding built up on it. And what you have is what we like to call vanilla skies, where in these, these old, you know, uh, photos, the sky was just white. So in order to manipulate photographs, all you would have to do is match that color through paint or whatever method you have and you could block out pieces that are built like the towers so what, what you see here is nothing has been built or is yet to be built except where the towers would pop up over this ridge at the top of the roofs so this to me this quote-unquote construction photo doesn't prove very much right it proves that there was dirt roads they had not much to work with around mm -hmm. them. It's, it looks uh, desolate. <laughs> yeah, it's desolate. So doesn't look like anyone would want to stay there anytime soon. But within, what is it, two years, 1885, 87, you had the entire city square. It looks magnificent. It looks, from afar, it looks like Jerusalem almost. It's, it's breathtaking. Whoa. So... Uh, one other thing I wanted to get into was the couch. <laughs> okay, this is going to blow your mind. You're going to love this with your... My uh, mind, bro? Yeah, with your fucking um, occult-obsessed thing. What the fuck? Now, do you see what we're looking at, this couch? Yes. This is a couch in the Ponce de Leon Hotel. I believe it's original. It's definitely 100 years old. Um this couch was in the Ponce de Leon hotel. And for some reason there was like this strict code of etiquette where the only people who were allowed to sit in this uh, couch were men that were courting women. So a man that was trying to win the favor of a woman would invite her to sit on this couch with him what and then the third the third seat was for a chaperone that was mandatory that there would be a chaperone that would accompany new uh first dates or whatever it would be a man courting a woman and then there would be a chaperone a, a man or a woman there just to sit there now look at this arrangement. How is anybody going to have a normal converse, conversation <laughs> with this arrangement? Okay. Now, when I saw this, I immediately thought of the three-sided sun wheel. And I didn't know the name then, but I do now. This is called the 
triacrian. Mm-hmm. And another name for it is the triskelion. A, uh, and you can see this all over the ancient world. They revered this just as much as they revered the swastika or the, the cross, um, stuff like that. The Star of David is a very ancient symbol. It's the patron symbol of Sicily, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And right there, you see it with the, uh, I don't know what to call it, the Merovingian eagles, the double-headed eagles. Those are snakes, too, at the top of the head, right? Or horns? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not a double-headed eagle. They're wings, but that is Medusa. So in Sicily, they put Medusa, mm. they put Medusa on top of the triacrian. And I think this is a triskelion where it, it kind of curls out like that. But this is a triacrian, which means three leg triacrian. Aquarius rules the legs. Acrian, Aquarius, Acri, mm. Acqui. So <clears throat> here you can see how extensive this is in different cultures um, used on the floor, used on coins in ancient Greece. Or maybe that's Rome. Sorry, sorry. That looks more like. Did you get the idea? That's the crest of Sicily. So what is that invoking? Is that invoking a certain type of energy in order to, again, it has to do with love, maybe some no, I, sex magic going on there, dude? No, I think, I think you're uh, getting warmer there. But I don't Some think swingers was Flagler I... <laughs> a swinger. He was, he was five. He was a swinger. Yeah, probably that mustache. He was getting up. He was, <laughs> he was like a 1880s uh, porno daddy. Imagine, dude. Imagine how much Flagler was getting, bro. It was the 80s, <laughs> the 1880s. The must, the mustache, and but. I thought that was very significant because I don't think anyone would sit in that couch and talk to the person they're trying. Maybe society was very different back then, but they're not even looking at each other. It's mm-hmm. not logistic. Looking whatsoever. at the back of their head, which is weird. Exactly. Very strange. And it is a sun. If you look at it from above, it's it's the three-sided sun wheel, three-legged mm. sun wheel. So what else you got? You want to get spooky, bro, since it's almost Halloween? You want to put this out next week? Make it a spooky a Halloween episode? <laughs> sure. We could also do a Halloween episode. I'm going to be back in Tampa for a little bit. Oh, yeah? Let me know when you are. So. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can do the uh, Lake uh, Bach Tower on the way back. Hello. If, if you want to meet me there. I'll meet you in Tampa. We'll do a podcast over there. And then. Okay. We can go to the plant hotel over there. Yeah. Okay. And then we could do Bach Tower. I don't know. Dude. Yeah. If you if you want to do that, we're gonna be over there probably like right after. Ah, uh, uh, so his face is in one of the tiles on the the quote unquote. Perf- you can't read it, bro. Hold on. Imperfect. So, Sorry. the story goes that they they did a viewing of his body at the rotunda again back to this ascent this magical ascension belief that you travel up through the rotunda right that's what that's what i'm getting at and supposedly right after that uh they the the doors had all shut loudly or something like that some some crazy story there's different var- variations of it and it spooked everybody so in the early 1880s, eccentric entrepreneur Henry Morrison Flagler bought an orange grove and began construction on a resort in St. Augustine, Florida in 1885. Three years later, Flagler's dream was realized when the lavish 540-room Ponce de Leon Hotel finally opened. The Ponce de Leon was the place to be and one of the first buildings in the United States to have electricity. He had Mark Twain, Ernest Hemingway all mm-hmm. visited the hotel. Even Teddy Roosevelt, Linda B. Johnson, all enjoyed stays at the hotel. So, okay. And now they say that, the, that now it's a Flagler College. The school is believed to be haunted by the ghost of Henry Flagler. There's stories mm-hmm. of his apparition. There's stories of his 
mistress's apparitions. Mm -hmm. And there is the ghost of his wife, the one that was messing around with Ouija boards and doing seances that allegedly she killed herself at the hotel. And was it, was it at the hotel? I, they say it was on the fourth floor and the fourth floor is closed, closed off to people. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and my boy, uh, homie Romy, he had told me that shout out to homie Romy from rising from the ashes podcast. He had told me cause he visited there. He went there that the people can, can see in the fourth floor sometimes like a hanging appar apparitions, like something hanging from like the ceiling again. Mm -hmm. Cause she killed herself. Like a, like a lynching. No, no. Like she killed herself. She hung herself. Okay. So like, right. yeah, yeah. But when you see the person hanging, they can see that at night or whatever. And there's a, a ghost of a little boy and that pinches people on the inside of their thighs, which I found was really weird. That's and, no, that's probably Flagler trying to get freaky. <laughs> so when he passed away in 1913, his body was held in state in the rotunda of the hotel. A few hours after Flagler's body was taken to a nearby church for the, for the funeral, a janitor discovered a tile on the floor that looked like a small portrait of Flagler's face, which I mean, <laughs> kind I don't of know. Was... I don't know about Flagler's face, but definitely a face. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, I don't know about Flagler's, but definitely a face. So the title is still there. In fact, if you want to find it, it is located by the gift shop, of course. Today, students of the college claim that they have encountered the spirit of Henry Flagler. According to legend, a former student always made a point to step on the tile and mock the urban legend until one day he heard a loud knock at his door late one night. As the young man sprang out of bed, suddenly the apparition of Henry Flagler appears. He's like, yo, what's up, motherfucker? Surprise! And the student was so distraught, he started yelling and ran out of the room and dropped out of school. <laughs> Damn. Ooh, spooky. So there's poultry guys activity and haunting. So that's why I was going to ask you, what are your thoughts on the bread brick holding mm. energy? And it can be charged and all that stuff. That's why, maybe that's why old buildings have more hauntings you know what i mean well yes yes it is um and wood too like all wooden floors like these old saloons in the west are almost always haunted um oh that's right because basically you've got uh with that conductive material or not even just conductive but impressionable where sound frequencies light might leave an impression uh a etheric impression on these materials that are uh what's the word crystalline or crystalline in structure and what you'd get is in times of violence or in instances of violence you have or just any you know anything but the violent and traumatic ones are very intense and more impression is is left you have in places like wood and brick, there are going to be more residues of a traumatic event or good events too, like a cathedral, right? You wanna sustain that good feeling for eternity in this brick building or a stone building. Um, I think what, what you have, what are we talking about? <laughs> Talking about the energy being held in these buildings because they're being they're right. able to be charged, right? So I, I definitely think they can hold memory, especially with the ghosts. Uh, all of Saint Augustine is is rumored to be uh, mm -hmm. haunted. They, one of the, they do one ghost of the most, tours. Yeah, one of the most haunted cities in the world, and I think that's uh, directly in part to the prevalence of Kakina Rock that goes on. That's that is there because absorbs all that memory all that activity i think and it's kind of like a record <clears throat> a wood floor is kind of like a record machine mm. for uh if you're walking the same footsteps as someone else you can possibly invoke the same oh damn bro like some memory. magic type of yeah memory. sympathetic magic exactly Whoa, that's so so trippy I, so a wood floor that might be 150 years old has soaked in all of those memories. And I do think that brick definitely uh, can respond the same way and poured concrete, maybe not, but 
poured kakina mix where they have the limestone crushed up shell and limestone mixed into it that is going to conduct more that's going to be more akin to the limestone in the pyramid than it would be to like uh everyday cement or concrete whoa dude yeah that's really trippy if you think about it how you're saying if you're able to match the same cadence and the same steps that some guy mm -hmm. took right you're able to invoke them is that it makes me think of the ceremonies that secret societies do like the masons and the checkered floor and stuff i wonder if it's made well, out of wood in like eyes and eyes wide shut um they do the high priest uh it looks like i'm jacking a dick off uh <laughs> stabs his, his staff down into the ground three mm -hmm. times it's like duh 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 and then later in the movie you know very akin to uh, sympathetic magic you have the high priest not the high priest the guy that because he's cl cloaked he might be someone else but the guy that you think might be the high priest later in the movie you see his face and he's got a cue ball he's either got the eight ball or, or a cue ball and he's standing on top of a pool table and the pool table is the same color as the carpet from the earlier scene where the guy st uh, st stabs the staff down and he hits the pool table with the cue ball three times on the red suede carpet. Mm -hmm. And there was red carpet in the temple or when they're having the orgy scene. And it's almost like he's using the pool cue to uh stomp the ground to knock the ground and then he evokes that same act later on in the in the movie when he hits the cue ball the same amount of times if you've ever watched eyes wide shut you got to watch eyes wide shut i was gonna say i've never seen it are you disappointed in me yeah that's a must that is a must for conspiracy theorists it's also just an amazing movie on so many I levels that's not the fucked up one, right? That or is it? Right, it is. It is the fucked up one. There's a Illuminati There's clock, orgy. Cl pretty, pretty Clockwork much. Orange is that one? Too, oh right? well, okay. I see what you mean now. Yeah, Clockwork Orange is like fucked up in the head. Like makes very good light of rape and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't like rape stuff. I don't like rapey stuff. <laughs> Dolphin. Dolphins are super rapey, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people don't know that that dolphins rape each other. It's crazy. I mean, you'd be surprised how many animals have, like, vicious sex, like cats included, you know? Is that what, is that what Dr. Longo does on his free time, like, <laughs> cat sex videos? I'm a, I'm a, veter, I'm a veterinarian doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no. Jeez. So, <laughs> no. I think... I don't know man, anything else you want to touch on because I, I we, we did a pretty this was i like this style where it's not like a lot of the r regular videos where people just don't really go into depth into the symbology i feel like they just focus on the buildings too much like okay the buildings are are really impressive i want to get into the deeper meaning right. like what does this building mean and i think that we talked about some of the Oh, yeah. More interesting points. Oh, I, I did want to touch on one little thing, um, if that's cool. Of course, dude. What do you know about boric acid? Boric acid? Not, not... Yes. So Nothing. one one thing that I forgot to tie in when I was showing the three legs, the three-legged things. Mm -hmm. um, can I share... Bro, why do you keep asking me? I'm not going to tell you no. <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's from the Wikipedia page for, what's it called? Triskelion. Now, there you go. It also seems to match precisely the molecule for boric acid. Which does what? I don't really know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh it just it just reminds me of, of alchemy. You Bro, know, this this is, is that an a... al alchemical symbol that is woven into architecture mm. or furniture. You know, you can this is how alchemists talk to each other. This is how occultists talk to each other. 
They don't talk on the phone and tell each other stuff. They have cues, cues that cue you in when you're initiated. And a couch may be that very cue. So to me, this could, you know, you walk into a room and the furniture might tell you a chemical equation, a chemical mixture. The, the couch is boric acid. You know, the chandelier is, you know, nitrogen, stuff like that. Interesting. So I looked up what boric acid is because how the fuck are you going to bring that up and not talk about what boric acid is? It was the last picture I put in there. But. So boric acid is a compound of boron, oxygen, hydrogen with formula B O H. And it is also, it is usually encountered as a colorless crystal or white powder that dissolves in water and occurs in nature. Mm. And then when you look I, up, go ahead. I wonder if they were using boric acid in the mix and that's the key to the mix. Well, uses boric acid is used as a fireproofing agent for wood as a preservate preservative and as an antiseptic it is used in the manufacture of glass pottery mm. enamels glazes cosmetics cements porcelain cements dude this is like cracking the code <laughs> like Pull the fucking, up the fucking weird ass and think about the courting think about the courting practice that that could be an allegory itself Mm. I, I read that off like the Wikipedia page. Um, <laughs> so it's got to be true, right? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that's the uh, that's the mainstream story. Well, let's mm. di let's dissect that with an al alchemist's yeah. uh, mm -hmm. pers perspective. The male and the female have to meet on this couch. Well, look, you have an O and an H, a oxygen and hydrogen molecule. Those are ma could be masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. And then you have then you have the B right there, the chaperone the third gender, the third party, the third, you know, the, the cuck. The, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The alchemical cucking, you know, we should name that episode, the episode, this, the uh, alchemical name, cuck. That's the a alchemical good one. Cuck. <laughs> like, yeah. it, cause and again, back to what I was saying, where we're breaking down the symbolism of what these places could have been used for after the fact, because we know that the elites mm -hmm. like to take things over and use or pervert them or use them for their own things. And when you think of a Rockefeller or a Flagler and you look at the way that they're portrayed, even in history, it's almost like they did nothing wrong. Have you noticed that where it's like they're squeaky clean? Yeah. Can't find dirt. Can't well, you know, things. it's I'm definitely not a communist, uh, but, you know, that is kind of one of the pitfalls of quote unquote capitalism if you make enough money and put your face on enough things you kind of are impervious to and if you're in bed with the right people like rockefeller and standard oil which he co-founded and some believe some believe that flagler was pulling the strings that flagler had a higher position than rockefeller mm -hmm. because rockefeller was almost like the face of the organization and Flagler seemed to be more of like a recluse. And Flagler's brother is even less known. And Flagler's brother, I believe, was also an investor. Step stepbrother. Stepbrother, sorry. So you have two... Harkness. So you have two uh, Flag, a Flagler, two family members, uh, and one Rockefeller. So, you know, who had more, who had more pull? Who had more say? Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so I think that about wraps it. Anything else? No, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. I, I really want to start digging deeper into Flagler and talking about him mm -hmm. more and the, the Henrys of Florida in particular. So maybe as we go along, we can start talking about the other Henrys that were very influential. And there are about mm -hmm. seven or eight of them that I haven't covered. Yeah. Which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. So... That wraps up the Ponce de Leon Hotel, St. Augustine. We're going to probably go visit there one of these days very soon. Make sure to check the first episode out, Patreon exclusive on Fort Jefferson, on either of our Patreons, patreon.com slash the one on podcast, at the one on podcast on all social media platforms, and on YouTube, all that good stuff. You can plug your stuff, Dr. Longo. 
Old World Florida on YouTube. Old dash, sorry, old underscore world underscore Florida at Instagram. And that's it. That's it, bro. That was that's a good all one. she wrote. That's all she wrote. So we'll catch you. Into the Harkness. Into the Harkness. <laughs> right. I'm going night-night. <laughs> I do.